decline and only watch it only a matter of time but you know what I believe once you stay connected nobody's going down you cut yourself off you're going down and don't let bitterness and strife and evil speaking and perception and own way of thinking cause you to take that part we cannot afford to be divided the essence and core of Christianity is warfare and in warfare you want unity the guide for the militant spirit of Christianity are not fully understood and so for decades for decades all we know is what's going on in the Western world and for decades the Western world has been brainwashed brainwashed again via through the media brainwashed into believing in an empty superficial watch it superficial and materialistic christian form of modern church industry christian has become an industry and become materialistic everything in church now is about things god will bless you with this and god will bless you with that and all this has to do with things of time if you do this you god will bless you you're going to have this send this gift and you're going to get this it's about things and things and things materialistic christianity the western world you don't see that in india you don't see that in africa you see that in china no, they have nothing and they're worshiping god but in the western world we have been brainwashed into believing that once you're a christian god will give you everything you want press down shaking together Superficial, materialistic Christianity and a form of industry, Christian industry, modern industrial greed. And people, they don't, you know, you know we, have, we haven't really experienced real suffering. Some people growing up now, they don't know what it is to lack anything. They don't know what it is to not to, not to have. They don't know what it is to grow up without a breakfast or one meal per day and not only not a full meal really they don't know what it is to be persecuted so the spiritual warfare you will see a new you will in fact you will see you will never see christianity the same again because christianity is never is not the same as it is in the west is not the same in the in the east do you understand that which is east whichever okay it's not the same in the east christianity has a different meaning there than it is here they understand what real christianity is we don't we do not and uh, the spiritual warfare that we involve in you will never see christianity the same again the spiritual warfare you will not only see faith but you'll see the world differently when the shaking start to intensify then you really have to sit and think what 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 christianity really is you see christianity will in, in you'll have an opportunity to prove your dependability on who you are depending on when nobody else can solve your problem and the problem we are having now you think anybody can solve it it's reaching by your doorstep reaching sister versus bedroom inside your house huh walk into her house a little child and put a gun on the child's head if you know in one sense we're glad that no adult was there because if I I, I don't know but I'm, I'm saying but what would have happened if you there and your child somebody with a gun at your child and threatened to kill you you, you want to jump in and most likely you could get shot And if you know what happened that day, every, all the adults just vanished from the house miraculously and thought if, if somebody was there, somebody would get got killed. God worked it that way. What I'm trying to tell you is this. We'll come to a place where we have to understand what it is to depend upon God for our safety. We have to know what it is to depend upon God for our safety. Now is no time for us to... We, we, huh. Now is no time for us to say I'm a Christian and everything is all right because I'm a Christian everything is not all right it's not all right because 
I am a mocked person. I'm targeted. And wherever I am, I am an offense. I am an offense. Because I carry the cross. Amen? I carry the cross. And the cross is an offense to anybody who doesn't know Christ. So don't think when you come to Jesus Christ, everything will be fine and the bed of roses. No. When you come to him, he said, I'll show you great things you should suffer for my name's sake. So I'm saying to you today, you're shaken, you're started. Christianity, we're at war. We're at war. And you know, mankind is about to enter. And watch this. I hate to have to say this, but it's true. Somebody has to say it. Mankind, not just here. Mankind is about to enter the bloodiest war in history. Read the Bible. The bloodiest war in history. And you'll see it has already been in the making. Because, you see, the spirit of Antichrist is here. And the spirit has started to spread. And you see what's happening. The very, the very sad thing that he will do during the tribulation has already started. So it will become a continuation, but only in a greater dimension. The only, listen to people, I wish I had time to really go through this, but this is conference material. The thing is that when you understand what's going on in the world today, in the Bible, in the book of Revelation, you realize there are only one set of people that really was concerned about beheading people. And if they are doing that, who it is carrying and are forerunners of the spirit of Antichrist? And now, people who are non-religious in that sect, and people who are just nothing following the similar pattern. Because you see, it's not just a religion, it's a spirit. It's a spirit of Antichrist and will invade anybody who becomes a vessel that he can use. You don't have to be Muslims. We have some crazy dope heads here doing the same thing. Are you listening to me? It's scary. It's scary. I was in my yard yesterday. I just opened the gate and went to get some stuff to bring back here in church. I pull up in the yard, and as I pull up in the yard, didn't close my gate on time. A car pulled right behind me. So I just looked back, and I saw a woman driving. I said, a woman? Okay, I said, what's good to see? I said, I could, I could handle her. <laughs> so she opened the door. She, she came right through the and She opened the door. As she closed the gate, she opened the door. And she stood up right and said, can I see her for a minute? I said, Okay. And I stood right there. I said, okay. <laughs> Hoping that she was watching. And then she pulled out a sheet with a picture and a piece of paper. And very cautiously, I walked down to her. And she said, um, my son has cancer in the throat and he needs some help. And he's trying to raise 20,000 US and already raised 15,000, what, 5 more thousand US. And they have this thing. So I, I give her some money and I signed the paper. And as she rolled back, and tried to drive up, her tire went flat and kept flicking out. So the tire went flat. So I called two guys and I told them to go and help her. What I'm trying to tell you is that you just don't know when trouble will show up. You understand? It could have been anybody who drove up behind me then. You understand? From nowhere this car just pulled, I just pulled in and this car pulled up behind me. I didn't close my gate on time, which I usually do. My wife, hear, my, my wife hearing me now, she'll quarrel with me when I get <laughs> See? So the thing is that we live in a very dangerous world. Very dangerous world. And we're about to enter into a warfare, a bloodiest warfare in fear, between, between, between Christendom, headed by Christ, and the revived Islamic empire, headed by the Antichrist. And that's the war, the world is about to, about to enter. And if you, if you miss that, you, you, you're going to miss future events. Christendom, against the revived Islamic empire, which is converged together, converged together with the Roman empire. And so, you have to take heed and prepare your soul for the great war that is to come. You have to take heed and prepare your soul for the great war that is to come. And you know what the service is about today? For you to receive the engrafted word of God that is able to save your soul. You know why I come to church? Not to show everybody you put powder and lipstick in your face, have a nice dress, or a nice suit, 
would have come to look at this one, look at that one, with cold shoulders or hot shoulders or whatever. We come together so we can be cohesive, be united in faith, be united in purpose. Because when one gets hurt, all of us get hurt. We are one. And when calamity and tragedy strike on the land and it affects our brothers and sisters, how do we think about each other? Do we say, well, that is their problem? No, we care about each other. And we will need each other. And we have to stand by each other. Are you listening to me? And we have to be committed to the God we serve. I mean, total commitment to the God we serve. And hear me? And we have to prove our commitment by the lifestyle we live. I was driving, went to get a few market stuff and we were coming back and I wanted to get a chicken. I don't like chicken, I don't like meat, I, I, do, I just tolerate it because it tastes good. <laughs> That's a good thing to tell the doctor when you go and he say you should eat something. Say, I, I don't like it, I just tolerate it sometimes. So on my way back, I pulled up to get chicken, and uh, I saw a sign there, close from 12 o'clock to 2 o'clock. We'll be back at 2 o'clock. You know why that was closed? Because some people were committed to the God they serve. Why we have, why it is that they will close up shop and leave their job and their workplace to go and serve God, and we will forsake our church on a Sunday morning and go look for, you know what? We have to prove our commitment by the lifestyle we live. Are you, here? Are you listening to me? And so, so the, it, uh, the question is, are you spiritually prepared for the coming storm? First or Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 7, it says, The mystery of iniquity do it already work. Only he who let will let till he be taken out of the way. The mystery of iniquity, underline the word iniquity, is a word that means, it's, it's, it's a Greek word, uh, enomia, enomia, enomia. You know what it means? It means violation of law. The mystery of iniquity. The violation of law. Do it already work. And what we are seeing with all these murders and kidnappings and killings and raping, is a violation of law, the mystery of iniquity, the mystery of lawlessness. Do it already work. Only He, He here is the Holy Spirit in the church. Only He, the Holy Spirit in the church, will now let, till He, the Holy Spirit in the church, be taken out of the way. When the church is raptured out of here, that the wicked himself, the Antichrist himself, will be revealed. Right now, the Spirit is around. You see? And so Haggai chapter 2 verse 6 and 7 tells us, For thus said the Lord of hosts, yet once, it is a little while, and I will shake the heavens and the earth and the sea and dry land. And I, verse 7 says, And I will shake all nations, and the desire of all nations shall come. Take note of that. And I will fill this house with glory, said the Lord of hosts. I'll fill this house with glory. So when the storm comes, the Bible says, The Lord shall be the hope of His children. Amen. When the Lord... Send, allow the storm to come in the world. The, 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 he shall be the hope of you and I. So when you see all these tragedies taking place, you know what you hold on to? You hold on to your relationship with God. Matthew 7, 24 tells us, Therefore, whosoever heareth these saying of mine, and doeth them, I will liken unto a wise man, which built his house upon a rock, and the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew. And beat upon the house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon the rock. And every one that heareth this saying of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon his house, and fell, and great was the fall. This parable is about a lifestyle of total and absolute obedience. Are you listening to me? Total and absolute obedience. Jesus is saying that only things established on the rock foundation will hold up in the coming storm. One man built his house upon the rock and it fell not. For it was founded upon that rock, the Bible says. 
the builders of these houses represents two classes of people in the last days the wise and the foolish the wise and the foolish they built two different kinds of houses which people were living in when the storm came and the storm hit two kind of houses what kind of house are you living in we talk about natural houses here we're not talking about that there'll be a body of believers who will not fall when the storm hits they'll be able to withstand every demonic onslaught that comes out of hell when the storm rage and from this parable you also learn that a person who build his house upon a rock will survive everything that is coming you will survive aren't you glad to hear that today you survive everything that's coming sadly sadly there'll be another group of people whom Jesus says their fall will be great their fall will be great this means a total complete devastating collapse of everything you held on to and rejected the Lord it means we are building our faith. This is important, church. You know, at, at, at this point, you may be wondering, what does it mean exactly to build a house? How do you build a house? It means we are building into our faith certain characteristics that will determine how we react on the present condition and pressure. You build a relationship that will help you to choose the right way to react under pressure. B praying in the Holy Ghost, building up yourself in your most holy faith. Are you listening to me? And this is what it's all about. When the storm comes, how many Christians will be able to stand? That's the Lord's concern in in, in this writing here in, my, in, in Luke. This is his concern. How many will fall when the storm strikes with the full force and fury? Do you know how many people are giving up today? How many people are backsliding today? Do you know people are sitting in the pews and they are backsliding already? How many will face it? How many will stand unmovable, abounding in the faith, being steadfast? The Bible speak. the Bible says, now the Spirit is Speak it expressly. The Spirit speak it expressly that in the latter times, which means the last days before the Christ comes, just as it is in the days of Noah, Jesus, the Son of Man will return is in the last days. He says, the Bible speaks expressly that in the latter times, some shall depart from the faith. Some shall depart from the faith. That is because they cannot handle the pressure and cannot respond. They don't know how to react to the pressure because they are built on the sand and not on the rock. When you're on the rock, Nothing can move you. That's maturity, church. It's sad to see people getting vexed for this little thing and vexed for this little thing and upset about this and upset about that and redraw themselves and they have a cold spirit. When you look at them, you can see they're frozen. Their face literally frozen like, like a dead person in the morgue. Little things. When you're mature, trivial things don't move you. You look beyond that. You know, stumble by little things. What are you building on? Look what's happening in our world today. We have more serious things to work on. We have work to do. Stop the foolishness. So when the storm, when the when the storm comes, how many of us are we standing? How many are gonna fall? It's time to wake up, man. It's time to wake up. If you wake up, God won't have to wake you up. Wake up. Paul told the Romans in, chap in chapter 13, verse 11, Romans chapter 13, verse 11, Paul said, And that knowing the time, now, that now is high time uh, to awake out of sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. So Paul warns us by saying, Therefore, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 6, 5, verse 6, he says, Therefore, let us not sleep as others do, but let us watch and be sober. Let us not sleep as others do, because the shaking is to wake up those who are asleep. But if we are awake, thank God. Jesus also said in Luke 10, 2, he says, The harvest truly is great, and the laborers are few. In James 4, 3, he also com commanded us by saying, Lift up your eyes and look on the fields. They are white already for harvest. And today, 
Do you know more than half of the world's population? More than half of the world's population has never heard the gospel of Jesus Christ to the point where they receive a conviction. We have work to do. I said we have work to do. Proverbs chapter 10 verse 5 tells us, He that gathereth in the summer is, is a wise son, but he that sleepeth in harvest is a son that causeth shame. Proverbs chapter 6 verse 9 tells us, How long will thou sleep, O sluggard? When will thou arise out of thy sleep? It's time, church, it's time to seek the Lord passionately. God's word states in Hebrews, uh, Hosea chapter 10 verse 12, he says, it is time to seek the Lord till He come and rain righteousness upon you. Seek Him. Second Chronicles 7, 14 tells us clearly, it states that it is time for Christians to humble themselves, pray and seek God's face and turn from their wicked ways. Church, what's the first thing God says He wants you to do? What is the first thing God says He wants you to do? Humble yourself. Tell somebody, say, that's your problem. That's your problem. We don't know how to humble ourselves. We're too proud. We, we're too good looking and we're too proud. We don't want to humble ourselves. Who is he to talk to me? Who is he to instruct me? Who is he to tell me what to do? We're too proud. But pride grows with destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. It's only a matter of time because you're building on the sand. See? Your bitterness isn't going to get you anywhere. And I tell you this, church. Time to seek the Lord passionately. The result of doing so will ensure the blessings of God upon us. Jeremiah 29 verse 13 tells us, And you shall seek me and shall find me when you shall search for me with all your heart. This, let me bring this to a close. This is a very dangerous world we're living in. And I'm going to show you why. Can I show you why? There's a little safe, you know, there's a little safety and security in fact, there's little safety and security anywhere in the world today. Little, say little. Little safety and security anywhere in the world today. But there's one safe place to be. Let me show you why it is that way. You see, how, how do you stay safe in this world with all that is going on today? When you leave here now, you have to drive home, right? Hmm? You don't know what you're going to meet on the road, what you're going to see on the road, what's going to happen. We don't know what's going to happen today, tomorrow. Or tonight, we don't know. How to stay safe in the world today? Can I advise you how to do that? Number one, don't write, don't write, don't write. Just listen. Avoid riding cars. Because they are responsible for 20% of all the accidents, fatal accidents. Don't ride cars. If you want to be safe, avoid riding cars. Number two, if you want to be safe, don't stay home because 10% of all crimes occur in the homes. So don't ride cars and don't stay home, you'll be safe. Number three, avoid walking in the street because 60% of all crimes occur to pedestrians. So don't walk on the street, don't ride cars, and don't stay home. Number four, avoid traveling by air and by water because 5% of all accidents involve these. Number five, of the remaining 5% out of 100, of the re that's 95% gone already. Of the remaining 5%, all deaths occurs in hospitals. So don't go to the hospital. <laughs> so don't ride cars, don't stay home, don't walk the street, don't travel by air, don't travel by land, and don't go in the hospital. And you'll be safe. But there is a good, there is good news. You'll be pleased to know that only 0 0.001%, 0.001% of all deaths occur in a worship service. Now you know where is the safest place on the earth. And the Father seeketh such that they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. That's the facts I'm giving you. Mm. 
And with long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Because he's dwelling in the secret place of the Most High. Hallelujah! The secret place is a place of worship. Wherever you are, be a worshiper. And when you're coming to the house of God, this is a house of worship. Therefore, logic tells us that the safest place you can be at any time or given point is at the church. And so, because of the un unprecedented crimes, the transition to terror is going unnoticed. I look at the, how the government is handling things and I watch it and listen to the news and they are blinded because of mind-blinding demons. The attorney general, he's blind twice. They are blind. They don't know. And the blind cannot lead the blind. And people are falling into the ditches. You are the salt and you are the light. And the eye is the window to the soul. You've got to understand that, folks. Is, here, here, here's what, this is what's good. You want to write these scriptures down. Watch this. Watch this. Ezekiel chapter 7. Look what's happening in the nation today. Look what it says. Make a chain for the land is full of bloody crimes. Make a chain for the land is full of bloody crimes. And the city is full of what? Who can deny that? Take that a slap in the face of the government and say, what are you doing about this? And they will tell you, there's nothing we can do. See, make a chain. You know what it means by making a chain? Signifying that they would be bound and led captive. They'll be bound and led captive. Have you ever seen them lead? He, he, um, captain being led, they all chained together. Hmm? Bound and led captive. For the land is full of what? That is the sins. The sins that deserve death. The land is full. The land is full of bloody crimes and the city is full of violence. That is a sin that deserves death. Listen to me, church. The violence and the bloody crimes those who, committed that, those who are committing this thing deserves death. What they deserve? Bring back. <sighs> That's the voice the Christian should be blowing out there. Bring back hanging. It's, law, it's the law of the Bible in the Old Testament and the New Testament. Because they do not bear the sword in vain. Who wants to search for solution? Jeremiah chapter 8 verse 15. Looking for solution. Look what it says. We look for peace but no good came. And for a time of health and behold trouble. No good, no health. Nothing. The land, bloody crimes, violent. This is the word of God. This is what's happening now. The danger of prosperity. People have so many things. But you know how dangerous that is? Look at, look at Ecclesiastes chapter 4 and verse 6. Bet how many you know riches and wealth cannot help you and save you from crime. As a matter of fact, money don't save you from crime. Money will get you into crime. Involved in crime. Watch this. Better is a handful with quietness. That word, that word quietness would be peace. Than both the handful with travail and vexation of spirit. You know what travail and vexation of spirit? You watch all them rich people. You know why they vex? You still wander from your job and they vex. They want to fire you. Huh? They want more and more and more. And let me tell you something. Most of the most of the things that are happening in the world today is not a little man that is responsible. Is the big man that is responsible. It's the riches of the world and the cares for riches. It's choking people. The desire for wealth and the, the love for money. It's fueling all this evil. The rich want to get richer. And they don't care what they do to the poor to get richer. Because richness never satisfies you. I thank God who said he'll forgive you, heal your sins, redeem your life from destruction, satisfy you, and satisfy your mouth with good things. So I thank God for that. But better is a little. Better there's a little, a little handful with peace and quietness. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Proverbs chapter 15, verse 16. 
Better is little with the fear of the Lord than great treasure and trouble therewith. You want to have tr- tr- uh, uh, prosperity and have trouble with it? You could keep it. The Bible says the blessings of the Lord make it rich and add it. No sorrow with it. No sorrow with it. Proverbs 16 and verse 8. Better is a little with righteousness than great revenues without right. My God. You see where the answer lies? We're going to go back to God. And you know what's the worst thing right now? Is politicians trying to be politically correct. Unprecedented crimes taking place in our nation. They're searching for a for solution and can't find it. They, we, they, we see the danger of prosperity. Everybody want to get into politics to get big and rich. And the danger of prosperity is causing guns and crimes to enter this country. And trying to be politically correct. Hear what the Bible says in Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verse 11. And this goes to all those who are watching me. You might be a government minister, whoever you are today. God will hold you all accountable for what's going on today if you don't take charge and do something. The Bible says, because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily, therefore the hearts that is desperately wicked of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. That's what's going on. So here it is. Because there is no hanging, there is no justice, and the jails are full, and the prisons are flowing over, and no justice in a long time, hundreds and thousands of cases there, and nobody's doing anything, and judges, and justice, and just all these, these, these men are getting the salaries, and nothing is happening, and jail buds all over the place. And prison van running up and down, full, from court to court, and no sentencing. And look what it says. Because sentence against an evil work and all these murders, almost 70 something now. And look at it. How many people are caught? Two? One? No justice. Because people in the job just for the money, just for the salary. Nobody, the work ethics in this country is poor. Nobody wants to work. Everybody wants money. Go for a birth paper and have two days to get it. And they're on the phone. The media. The media. Because sentence against an evil work is not executed. The word sentence there is justice. Where do you find justice? What's the absolute for that? There's no justice in man. There's no justice in the court. There's no justice from the justice system. There's only justice on the cross. The only absolute. So he said because justice against an evil, evil work. Evil work is crime. Because justice against crime is not executed speedily. He says, therefore the hearts, the hearts, the minds... The heart is the mind. The minds of the Son of Man is fully set in them to continue to do. That word do evil is continue to do evil. So they are continue to kill and murder and slaughter people because they know they're going to get away with it. Only for a time. They think they're going to get away with it. They think they're going to get away with it. They will get away at the moment. If this law of the land can pick you up, God will pick you up. The Holy Ghost Bears record and God's eye are running through and through the earth, beholding the good and the evil. And he'll bring justice. That's the only absolute is the justice from God. And watch this. God is keeping his record. Watch it. What? Watch, watch, watch what he's saying. Watch what he, look what he says. Because sentence against an evil work is not excused speedily, the minds of the sons of men are fully certain to do evil. So they figure, okay, God, where are you? You know God. If you were God, you do something about it. Okay? Go to Psalm 50. Go to Psalm 50, look what God says. Look what God says. The thing that we can get away with it. These things hast thou done. God says, these things hast thou done. And I kept silence. I kept silence. Thou thoughtest that I was altogether just as one as thyself. But I will reprove thee and set them in order before your eyes. See where justice comes from? God said, because you're doing all these crimes, you think, and I'm silent. You think I'm just like you. But one of these days, I'll bring justice before your very eyes. So, criminals, your days are numbered. Murderers, your days are numbered. All you violent people, your days are numbered. Justice is in the hand of God. If you don't repent, he'll fix you right. He'll fix you right. When capital punishment is not enforced, it defiles the land 
by the fact that it shows disregard for human life and the world is defiled by the shedding of innocent blood. It is shocked to see children killing their fellow students and teachers and even their parents. When capital punishment is not executed, also it spreads hatred and increases violence. It is a deterrent. It is. And those atheists who think it's not a deterrent, yes, it is a deterrent if you're watching me today. Capital punishment is a deterrent. If you know you're going to get killed for doing something, you're going to be hanged for doing something, you will think twice. If you know there's a bad dog in my yard, you'll think twice to jump over the fence. You heard that, dummies? And so it strengthens the desires of murderers. When capital punishment is not executed, it strengthens the desires of murderers. I could kill you and get away with it. So as a result of that, we have unceasing corruption in high places. And you know what? You think you're going to get justice? Let me show you something. Look at Micah chapter 2. Let me show you what is going on with the big hierarchies in these countries. I know plenty of people watching me this morning. Some things I want to say, I have to hold back. But watch what is going on. The good man is perished out of the earth. The good man is perished out of the earth. Now he's perished, he's kidnapped or driven out. And there is none upright among men. Look what it says. They all lie in wait for blood. They hunt every man, his brother, with a net or a snare. That they may do evil with both hands, earnestly. Watch what it says now. The prince ask. The judges ask for a reward. See, all the big, bo big boys and the big men, they want, you in trouble? Well, if you give me a little thing, I'll take care of that matter in court for you. The judges take and bribe. The police take and bribe. Thank God to Samaritan to save. The lawyers take and bribe. The judges take and bribe. The police take and bribe. Ministers of government take and bribe. Corruption. Encouraging crimes. These are the big boys. Look what it says. They hunt every man his brother. That they may do evil with both hands. Honestly, the, the prince asked it, and the judge asked it for a reward. No absolute justice. And the great man, he uttered his mischievous desire, so they wrap it up. So they wrap it up. You could go and do what you want. We come together, we're going to get the judge, the police, the big man, and the small, uh, get all that. We're going to wrap it up, and you get away. That's what's going on in this nation today. I'm not ashamed and no apology for saying that. Because that's the truth. I'm telling you the word of God. If this is not the word of God, throw me out. But it shows that the prince, the judge, the rich man are all linked together to do evil. Because, they, because of the heart and the condition of man desperately committing evil every day. And doing evil deeds to one another. You know in these things going on there, you know what kind of world we're living in. You know what example you ought to live. You know what you have to do as Christians. Inevitable eventualities. Matthew 20, 24, 7. Matthew 24, watch this. That for nation, this is what's coming. For nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines and pestilences. Listen to this. Watch it, watch it, watch it. Nations, the word ethnos. Ethnos means race. Nations against nation. Ethnos. Race against race. You see it there? It's happening today. Then it goes on to say, and kingdom against kingdom. Kingdom de Bas Basilea. is the word Basilea in Greek. Basilea means religious rule. So kingdom against kingdom. Religious rule against religious rule. So race against race. Ethnos against ethnos. Basilea against Basilea. Religious rule against religious rule. That's the war we are in today. See? And there should be famine, famine and pestilence. The word pestilence is, is, was, is was loimos. The word pestilence means lo, loimos in Greek. What it means? See, the Greek gives us a deeper meaning. It means the plague, the disease, and the pest. 
with all these crimes, wars, violence, murder, you have disease, pestilence. And pe what is going on in our world today? These are the things, Bible says, we're only the beginning of sorrow. The cataclysmic natural phenomenon you have also. Watch this. Disaster in the sea, disaster in the air, disaster on earth. Tsunamis, hurricanes, mudslides on earth. What do you have on earth? Watch this, watch this, watch this. I'm closing now. I'm closing now. On earth, earth, mud, dirt. What do you have? Mudslides, earthquake, earthquakes, and displacement of humanity. In the air, what do you have? Hurricanes. Crashing wars. In the sea, what do you have? Roaring tsunamis. We have seen all those things. We haven't seen no tsunami yet. Right now, there's a tsunami in this country, nobody realizing it. Waves and waves of blood flowing, not seeing it. Famine and earthquakes, pestilences. What are the pestilences? Deadly epidemic outbreak. Look, the way the world is so populated now, a simple outbreak and millions of people. In one day, it can be contaminated. Sexually transmitted diseases increasing. Infectious diseases with no treatment or cure are transmitted by easy travel. Between nations, poor sanitation, growing urbanization, and overpopulation. Yesterday and last night, they announced the Trinidad is now 1.4 million. That's what they're known about. Where was 1.3? 0. 0.4 of foreigners just came in. Terrorists just came in. And then you have worsening wars. International wars, religious wars, national wars, ethnic wars, and racial wars, drug wars, gang wars, violence and murder, and marriage wars. Marriage should come together and have worship, not have worship. When, when will these things happen? When will these things happen? You know when it will happen? 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 1. 2 Timothy 3.1 Know this also, that in the last days, perilous times shall come. When will it happen? In the last days. When it is happening? In the last days. But thank God, the good news is, Christians, we have a foundation. When the shaking starts, we have a foundation. The standard show. Give the Lord a hand. We have a foundation. The standard show. You want me to prove it to you? 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 19. 2 Timothy 2 9. Everybody read it together. Shall we together? Nevertheless, in, hold, 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 hold. Nevertheless, all I said to you this morning, keep that in mind. Now you see, nevertheless, in spite of all that's going on, nevertheless, the foundation of God's standard show, having this seal. Watch this now. The Lord knoweth them that are His, and let everyone. That name it, the name of Christ, depart from iniquity. Give the Lord a hand of praise. We have a sure foundation. A sure foundation. So church, my advice to you as your pastor this morning, and for those of you watching today, contend for the faith. Contend for the faith. Build up yourselves in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Keep yourselves... Keep yourselves in the love of God. And I said to you, while you do that, of some have compassion and of others pull him out of the fire. That's the mission and the mandate of the church of God. God bless you. Let's all stand in the presence of God. Give the Lord a good hand of praise today if you receive that word today. Mighty God. Come on, give the Lord a hand of praise. Somebody shout praise the Lord. Thank God for your foundation. Thank God for your blessings. Thank God for waking you today and you're not asleep. Thank God for giving you insight. Lift your hands for we have gotten an insight of the hands of God. Vengeance is mine. Judgment is in the hand of God. Let us seek, the, let us seek Him like never before. I tell you, God wants to bring, come on quickly, quickly, quickly. God wants to bring this church into a place of worship like never before. A place of prayer like never before. I want everybody start praying for this nation right now. Come on, start praying for this nation right now. Forget about yourselves. Pray for this nation right now. Oh God, we need you. We need your intervention. Shake what has to be shaken, Lord. And let what cannot be shaken be remain. That men will know that you are God. Men will know you are God. 
Oh, in the name of Jesus, Father, we depend upon you today. We depend upon you today. This is the day that the Lord has made. Oh, God, for everyone that is watching right now. Lord, you have a plan for your lives. You have a plan for this world. When we see the shaking and the storm rising up, Lord, help us to stand on that foundation. For those of you watching, make sure you are on that foundation. On Christ, the solid rock. Build your life on that solid foundation. Build as a wise master, Bill. Count the cost. Look around you. Look what's happening. There's no justice. There's only evil continually. The only place you find love is on the cross. The only place you find justice is on the cross. The only place you'll find forgiveness is on the cross. Where there is justice, love, and forgiveness is the presence of God in your life. The presence of God in your life. Oh God, we thank you today. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Somebody give him praise. Lift your voices. Thank God for his safekeeping power in your life. He's keeping you safe. He's protecting you. You're covered by the blood of the Lamb. You're forgiven of your sins. You're cleansed by the blood. You're sanctified by the Spirit of God and the Word of God. You consecrate your life and be acceptable unto God. Lift your hands and let it be a passion today. We want to see this nation turn around and God and the Lord Jesus Christ build the lips of every person. Forgive our sins and heal our land. Lord, keep us awake. Keep us awake. Just as you are, for he that keepeth Israel, neither slumber nor sleep. Help us to watch and pray. Help us to be aware. Help us to be sensitized. Help us to care for one another. The time has come. Yes, we have to be our brother's keeper. Oh God, help us to watch over the souls of each other. Help us to be more caring, Lord. Let there be no division, no schism among us. When the church is strong, the nation will be strong. When the church is united, Lord, we become a force to be reckoned with. When the people grow in knowledge, they become mature. And I pray for maturity. I pray for edification. As we consecrate as we sanctify, as we change our hearts and minds and way we think. May we be empowered. May we be empowered to press against all the odds and we choose to respond in an appropriate manner to any predicament we might find ourselves in. I pray God, I pray for every Christian to be smart and sensitive, to walk in wisdom to those who are without. Lord, help us to avoid everything, everything that will take us down a negative path, a negative road. Help us to walk the path of righteousness. Help us to care with compassion 
and be more passionate about the things that has eternal values. Oh God, I pray that every church service, every church service will be meaningful where we can come together and rejuvenated, educated with your wisdom to live successfully, gloriously, victoriously, to trample over the enemies. Father, today I stand here and Lord, I lift up the souls of every person in this congregation and those who are watching today all over the world. Lord, I pray that they receive this engrafted word today that's able to keep them alert. Father, let love be without dissimulation. Father, protect every family in their homes, in their going out and coming in. Protect our sons and daughters, our grandchildren. Lord, keep them safe, even in the schools. Father, we put them into your hands with all the bullies and all the wicked spirits out there. Lord, I pray for the protection of your mighty hand upon our children. Uphold them with the right hand of your righteousness. Lord, those who are going through difficult challenges right now with their health, I ask you to help them. Those who are facing challenges with their children or their families, help them. Those who are going through marital problems. Those who are challenged in their minds mental, mentally, Lord. Those who have concerns of God that are worrying them, I pray that they will enjoy your peace and quietness and confidence. Lord, I know the greatest challenge most people are facing right now is health in their bodies. Oh God, they're conscious of their health. Lord, if they're health, if they're conscious of the health and they're concerned about the health, you promise to perfect that which concerns us. So I ask you, Lord, to perfect our bodies. Give us healthy bodies to do what you have us to do. And Lord, just to live, just to live to please you, because there's nothing worth living for that will not benefit life for the long term. We live for you, Lord, and we set our treasures in heaven. For where our treasures are, there will our heart also be. Bless this congregation, Lord. Oh God, you know every need right now. You know every heartache, every heartburn. You know every situation, everything that is causing pain and heartache. Oh God, I pray you minister your grace. Your grace is suffering. You are our God. You are our God. You can do anything. You can do anything that faith can believe you for. And by faith, we believe you to give us a peace that passes all understanding. Touch every person, every body. Touch that physical body of ours, Lord. And God, let your healing flow through from the crown of our head to the soles of our feet, Lord. Heal every impediment in our bodies right now. We decree it in the name of Jesus. Diabetes, we come against it. High blood pressure, we come against it in the name of Jesus. Every uh, pain of arthritis, we come against it now. Every blood disease, we rebuke it and cast it out, Lord. Every symptomatic problem that is affecting the mind and the brain, we come against it in the name of Jesus. Oh, every vessel, every organ, every tissue, oh God, we pray that your Holy Spirit, oh God, will touch, Lord. And Lord, remember the exchange on Calvary as we eat of your body and drink of your blood. Oh God, we receive our healing, oh God. We come against cancer, we come against every, 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 every non-communicable disease. We come against all the things that is our blood that is, that is causing problems, oh God, in our health. I rebuke it in the name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus. Even Sister Joyce, we pray you touch her right now and clear up, oh God, every blood clot in her brain. Re remove it, oh God, and set her free and bring her home, oh God. I pray, Lord, whatever they're doing right now, Lord, will eliminate every iota of blood clot in her brain right now. In the name of Jesus, bring her home, Father. Oh God, hear her cry and give her the desires of her heart. Touch her children. 
and give them the strength, Lord, as they go from day to day, Lord, in support of the, the mother. I pray for your blessing, Lord. Oh God, touch this is high. Touch everyone that may sick, whether Jeevan, Lord, all those are sick in body right now. Glory to God. Put your hands over your heart right now, everyone. Put your hands over your heart right now and ask God. Lord, give us healthy heart right now. Give us a healthy heart, Lord. Not only physically, Lord, but give us a heart, oh God, of understanding, compassion, and love, oh God. And knowing that healing also comes when the mind is free of all the stress. It will bring healing to our heart, Lord. Our heart will not race off. Our heart will not be pressured when we start thinking outside of the box. When we start thinking about the things that's going on, Lord, we'll be at peace, Lord, so our heart will communicate and calibrate with our mind, Lord, and have a peace and release your healing right now in the name of Jesus. Strengthen and bless everybody, Lord. Take our bad hearts and give us a good heart, Lord, in the name of Jesus. There will be a transformation of the mind that we, have, we think right now. For this is one of the vision for this year, Lord. We change our way of thinking in the mighty name of Jesus. Bless us this morning and let us leave here with healthy bodies, healthy mind, a fervent spirit, objectivity, and focus in the name of Jesus. And all God's people say, Amen and Amen. Give the Lord what He deserves right now. A mighty hand of praise as the ushers come to get ready to receive the Lord's tithes and offering. Glory to God. I hope you receive that word today and it's a blessing and a challenge to you to understand where we are in this present condition of this world and where God is and what He's about to do. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. With the honor, ask the Lord blessing on your offering, would you please? Come bring your gift and worship the Lord with gladness in your heart.